Welcome to the Introverted Doctor Podcast, dedicated to uncovering myths, mistakes, and misconceptions that holds healthcare professionals back from living their best life at work, home, and play. In each episode, we focus on different aspects such as communication techniques, mindset, routines, habits, and behaviors with the goal to show how to eliminate anxiety, trip-ups, and unwelcome results that comes from ineffective communication. In the last few months, the whole world has changed tremendously in such a short time. The world has always been changing, albeit slowly, towards an improved level of equality, but certainly not equity. In my experience, we get spikes of awareness or protests about specific issues or injustices that happen, but then they fizzle out because there isn't a sustained momentum that requires ongoing resources. The barriers to change seem too stiff or ingrained in the system. The barriers may change as a result of the actions, but not always significantly. And the supports often to sustain that change are very fleeting. Now things appear to be different given the tensions and conflicts occurring in the background of a pandemic. Yes, everybody's been affected in 2020 because of the virus, but importantly, the virus has unveiled many social inequities that have always been plaguing us, and it's hard to ignore them now. The issues of inequality, inequity are not new, but sometimes it's hard for people to say something about the injustices, and this happens for a few reasons. The first reason, is not knowing how to articulate yourself eloquently, to voice what you're thinking and feeling, to make yourself understood. Secondly, if you try to, you don't know how you might come across and you may not want to engage in further conflict with people who don't agree, or worse, will now label you and create new conflict in your life. Certainly, a person may be afraid of repercussions. They may stay quiet and inactive, even if it's happening or happened to them. And when they've been hurt, they're working on damage control to minimize the toxic effects. They disengage and lick their wounds. This is the same as how one would rest and tend to an, to an infection that is simmering down, hoping it won't come back to reinfect them. I believe one reason many good caring people don't say anything about infringements and injustices around them is that they're struggling with their own issues and life circumstances. They're dealing with relationship conflicts, financial conflicts, emotional challenges, and so much more. All of that takes energy. They can't even begin to think about others and the oppressions that they may be that may be occurring or occurred. It's as if they're treading water and that's all they can do because they don't want to drown. They're struggling to swim just trying to make it to the other side, let alone helping anyone else. There is an illusion of all things being equal all the time that we must reconcile in reality. Anyone who's markedly different, whether it's based on their color, general look, orientation, name, height, or economic status, understand struggle in social, political, and economic context. Often a person who is obviously disadvantaged and markedly doesn't fit into a popular cultural norms or values experiences inequities in a system that does not favor them. Sometimes we brush inequities or personal injustices we see or experience aside because we build an immunity to them and ignore the wounds that have been well wielded. It can become a blind spot. For example, my secretary was annoyed with the new patients who came to the medical clinic when I first opened up my practice. She was annoyed and visibly angry when people repetitively asked her, can the doctor speak English? based on the fact that my name was different and uncommon. I found it amusing, but she didn't. She hadn't had a constant experience of these minor infractions or presumptions that people make. She couldn't imagine such behavior. 
I didn't need to imagine that because that was a consistent experience for me. We can't imagine other people's situation to the same level that they experience it. But just because we can't imagine a reality doesn't mean we don't care. But is caring enough? Is it enough even though it doesn't directly impact you? Prejudgments happen, but sitting back and sharing your voice is instrumental. This brings me back to the original difficulty I mentioned in that sometimes we don't know how to use our instrumental voice to articulate ourselves eloquently in order to speak up correctly or explain a situation better in a discussion or debate. That's why I'm always enamored by great communicators and why I'm always looking at how I can communicate an idea more effectively. The best example that fits the current climate is in regards to, quote, Black Lives Matter. The rebuttal out here is, quote, all lives matter. Saying all lives matter as a response to Black Lives Matter is like saying the fire department should spray down all the houses in a neighborhood, even though only one house is on fire, because all houses matter. Yes, your house matters too, but your house isn't on fire. That's the power of metaphors and language. I've spoken about that on a previous podcast episode. Another way to illustrate this point is through, through the explanation of equity and equality. Equality is assuming everyone is the same when that is not true, and everyone is given an equal level of support. A great image that depicts this is three people who are each different heights and who are trying to watch a soccer game over a fence. Equality is if we give all of them the same size of box to stand on. That might help one person see over the fence, but maybe not the other two, who even after standing on the box, still can't look over the fence. A a second image, which explains equity, has different heights of boxes to account for the different heights of the individuals whereby everyone can look over the fence and enjoy the game. This implies different supports are given so that it is possible for equal access to watch the game. In a third image, all three people can see the game when the fence has been removed without any supports or accommodations being made because the cause of the inequity has been addressed and removed. In other words, the systemic barriers are taken down. We all need metaphors and analogies to help better understand ourselves and others in terms of what to say and how to create constructive action. Be mindful of any useful analogies or stories or jokes that help explain a concept. When we collect them and share them, it changes the conversation and we can move people internally to more external responsible actions instead of watching in fear of being reprimanded or in doubt of how to articulate oneself. The magic comes with learning how to communicate. It's never too late to share your voice because your voice matters. If you are looking at ways to express your voice, you can step into it. Being actively present and working on ways to voice the inequities and barriers that occur in life is plenty. When good people are indifferent and don't try to speak up or go beyond their safety zone, then nothing changes. That's not an extrovert's job with compassion, and that's not an introvert's job to overcome their shyness. It's the job of everyone who believes in people having chances to live a healthy, happy life, to responsibly say something. A little step for you is a huge step for someone undergoing an injustice, no matter how large or small. Being quiet is accepting the wrongdoing. Nobody needs pity or empathy anymore. The world needs active thinkers and doers. Effective communication and action is immunization against ignorance and discrimination. Thank you so much for listening, and may you and your family family be well in this time. 
I hope this podcast was some benefit. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode or the podcast, please share it with your friend or colleagues and subscribe to us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. And if you go to theintrovertedoctor.com and sign in, I'll, you'll get my weekly emails about the podcast episodes. I'm Dr. Lalit Chavla, and thank you so much for listening.